My name is Jess Blake and my social media is Jess Blake. Just Blake on all, all outlets. Uh, my, my Twitter is Blakey Blake, but at the same time, I don't really be on Twitter like that. I need to, but I don't, I don't, I, I don't be on Twitter as much as I should, or Snapchat for that matter. My name on Snapchat is the Blake Chat. Mm -hmm. Real simple. <laughs> yeah. I hear you on that. I don't like Snapchat either. It's a little bit confusing yeah. to me. It's too. It's, it's it's real personal. It's like when I was on it, only people that I accepted was like my friends, people that I knew organically. Because I'm just like one of those people. I don't. I don't like, I don't know, I don't like people in my personal business like that, you know what I'm saying? Snapchat is kind of personal. It's like, hey, oh my God, look what I'm doing, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, and it's, it's momentarily, but at the same time, it's just like, I don't want everybody seeing it, you know what I mean? I'm right, just right. like that, uh -huh. <laughs> All right, so let, uh, where are you from? From Detroit, eight miles to be exact. And um, you lived here your whole life? Yeah, so, uh, definitely. Um, lived on eight miles till I was about 14, then my mom and my dad, my stepdad, Moved to Sherwood and then just kicking it on seven mile, but I'm still an eight mile bridge. <laughs> All right, hold up, hold up. Ah. <laughs> so, um, when did you start getting into music? Um, well, music started for me, uh, poetry. I did poetry since I was about nine, ten, and um, when I uh, I'm in, I was in this program. During the summer, it's called a uh, Cranbrook uh, Upper Bound, and you go every summer or whatever. And um, it's kind of like school, but there was a class, and it was a poetry class, and we had like a, we would make, a, we created books, and I was like, I made, I drew the artwork, some of the artwork, and then I, you know, I contributed to the book, and from there, it kind of like, it kind of grew, I guess. Um, I didn't start rapping until probably 16, 17. I was with this group in high school they called the team at Renaissance and it was just like a hobby, you know, just going to the studio, having fun, you know, just having something to do. But at the same time, it was just like, um, you know, they, it, for me, it was more than that. You know, it, it grew to be more than that. It was like, um, I was like, damn, I, I really like this. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, you know, I listen to music all the time. Like when I was, what, when I was like 10, 12, I used to fall asleep to Destiny's Child. <laughs> Like my my stepdad would come in, he come in the house like, girl, you so grown. Why are you falling asleep to Destiny's Child? And I'm like, this album is just everything. It was the um, what was that? What was the album called? Uh, they last album they did together. What was the name of it? I have no idea. Oh, uh, wasn't it? Uh, whatever it was, with cater to you on it. That mm -hmm. album, the whole album, ain't no stopping. We going straight through. I just, uh, <laughs> oh my god, like for real. But. So cater to you was one of your favorite songs. Oh no. Oh, 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 no. Oh no. no. no was your My favorite girl. The girl with, when they were talking to their friend, they're like, girl, I can tell you've been crying. Mm -hmm. I need somebody to talk to. Like, I was, oh my God, I love that song. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> back to, so I, that's the thing. I, I just start rambling. So y'all gotta, y'all gotta get your own Yeah, <laughs> I ramble. But um, yeah, so Music started to be from poetry, and I was with the team, and then, you know, they kind of like, we kind of branched off, I went to Michigan State, I went to Western, and I kind of got more focused on it when I started going through stuff, I guess. You know, you go through things, you you, you need to learn, you have to know how to cope with it, you know what I'm saying? And you don't want to result to negative things, and music was one of those things that I like, that just like, it just was like, a, it just clinged to me, it was just like a, oh yeah, this is it, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, I would want to hear a song but it wouldn't the song wouldn't exist so guess what i gotta create it you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying mm -hmm. you know what i mean so it was just like that for me and i didn't get but honestly truthfully i didn't get serious with music until 23 i'm 25 you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying i've been i've been doing music since 16 but i didn't i didn't take it serious until 23 when i dropped my first project the youtube mm -hmm. special and um because people i started getting people that believed in me like oh blake whoa you know that's nice you know what i'm saying like the very first song that i ever recorded was um it was a song called leaving and me and my friend table we did this we did it and it was like the way every like the way my family reacted to it it just motivated me so much i'm like y'all really like it like that like oh my god i gotta keep going like, i want to make y'all do this again like but i started making more songs but that reaction the reaction started like it started dimming down and i was just like wait mm -hmm. I gotta do some more work. I got work to do, you know what I'm saying? So 
I um I started like taking it more serious. Like I started researching different things and I start like um I start like watching people that had it going, that had something that were that were moving forward. They weren't just like, oh I'm going to the studio, I'm gonna record this song, I'm gonna drop it. You know what I'm saying? It, it, that was just it for a minute. But then we started uh, I started like Oh damn! They got a. This person got a website. This per, this person got you know. This person got professional shots. This person got this. And then I was just like, I need to. I need to wake up. If I want people to believe in me, I gotta. You know, I gotta make the steps to make them believe in me. I can't just. Oh, I got good music. Come come fuck with me. Come on, come on. You know what I'm saying? You can't do that. And I really, for a long time, I really thought that. Like I used to be like, I used to be like, are you not fucking with me? Like I got good. I, I can. I got good music. But it's just like you have to show people. You know what I'm saying? What you're willing to do before they're willing to help you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's not even necessarily help. It's more to me. It's more like a collaboration because help it just sounds so. It just sounds weak. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And it's it's not and it's not weak. You know what I mean? But people take help for for being weak, especially in Detroit. Like mm -hmm. help is oh, help is something that is kind of like shunned on a little bit. Like you know, you know, it's just so I just try to do everything myself, and that's part of me being a Virgo. You know, Virgos are like that. We yeah. like to do everything ourselves and try to make it work. But I mean, I, I think so too. Like um, just going off of the last thing you, you said about uh, the help. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people um, may say that you need to help yourself before um, you know asking for help. And yep. I think you know just hearing your story, it sounds like you getting out there, you trying it for yourself. Um, and seeing if you can get it by yourself before you ask for help, and I think that goes a long way too. And that shows, you know, your work ethic and, and how serious yeah. you is about your, you know, your skill and, and what you're getting into. Right. So yeah, yeah, most definitely. So um, tell us a little bit about um, your projects um, that you're working on currently. So my first project, um, YouTube special. So basically, I get all my beats off of YouTube because I couldn't afford to pay for beats. You know what I mean? So I got them off of YouTube. And it, you know, it wasn't like I would find a beat and just work on it. I would, it would take me maybe an hour or two to find a beat that I that really just like hit me like, oh, oh yeah, I can ride this. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, you know. So after I find those beats, um, my mom, you know, because I'm from a mom, you know, Scotty Gang. Um, my mom knows. She knew like a guy from the hood. He had a he had a studio, and um, they were you know they were friends from back you know back when they were kids and stuff. So he allowed me to come into his studio for free. You know what I'm saying, free of charge, and work on my project. And um, I actually met my engineer who um, who recently passed. You know, uh, rest in peace. Uh, he uh, I met him through him. He was his cousin, and he um, he basically he my whole project him and thousand. Uh, Sean Watts and Thousand, they um, they kind of like I don't know, they kind of built me up. You know what I'm saying? Like they really uh, they really like took me out the gate. Like I really that was they really pushed me past the, like the start line. You know what I'm saying? Like because before that I was kind of hesitant. I'm like yo, what, what am I doing? You know what I'm saying? Like I know I got it, but like what am I doing? Because I had friends that were in the studio. You know what I'm saying? Like Foodboy Martin, that's like one of my closest friends. Like he was in the studio doing his thing, and I was just seeing him work. And you know I was always around him. I'm it's time for me to start doing something, you know, it's time for me to really get into it. And like, um, when I started working with Sean and, um, and Thousand, um, they just, we just clicked. Like, we clicked like, it was like a, it was just like, damn, you know, and he really believed in me. Like, I could feel his genuine, you know, I could feel really the genuine love from him. Like, Blake, oh my God, you know, like some people would be like, because if you're paying for something, people, they're they going to egg you on so you, right. keep, cause you keep doing it. But it was for free, and he was still doing it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So it was real. It was really real. So it was just like you know, the love was really real, and um, it motivated me. It pushed me. And like the way all the songs came on YouTube Special, um, it, it, they came about like by day. Like I literally, I didn't. It wasn't nothing that I just I knew I was gonna do. It literally just went with the flow, like mm -hmm. with the beat. Like I would literally go into the studio, I would go into the booth, and I would freestyle. And what I, what I get from that freestyle, I take it, and then I'll write. You know what I'm saying? I do it differently. You know what I'm saying? I'm not. I don't. I don't write and then try to put it to the beat. I have. I gotta hear the beat first, mm -hmm. and then you know I gotta ride the beat and do it like that. I can't. I don't. I don't even see how people. I personally don't see how people work that way. Like mm -hmm. because how are you? How do you know? You know. I mean. I guess you can put. Well, I guess I don't know. There's more than one way. There's more than one way to skin a cat. So. Never mind that. <laughs> Why are you trying to kill the cat? Right. No, I'm just saying. Like, you know, I don't want to kill the kitties. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Love the kitties. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but yeah, see, like I said, I just, I just, I go off into other shit. But um, mm -hmm. long story short, though, YouTube special came from me just being hungry and wanting people to really understand and, and see that I'm serious. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like I got, I got some stuff that's worth it. You know what I mean? And every time people hear my music, they're like, "That's you." I'm just like, and I'll be a little offended for a second. Then I'm like, okay. Yes, that's me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, whatever. But yeah, that's how YouTube Special came about. And uh, my second project, uh, Auto Tunes, um, it actually was pop up. That was a pop up project. Um, oh wait, before I go into that, I forgot to add that. Uh, so my because I get my beats off YouTube, right? So I I uh, created a subtitle for all my projects called "Don't Sue Me" because you know they're not my beats. So mm -hmm. please don't sue me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So uh, because some of the beats uh, on YouTube that I got, they are sold. You know what I'm saying? So I couldn't. There was nothing I could do. So I'm just like, okay, well I gotta make this work. So don't sue me. Right. You know what I'm Hashtag saying? Hashtag don't sue me. Ha right. You know that. So <laughs> so YouTube special is don't sue me volume one, and then auto tunes is don't sue me volume two because those beats are still from YouTube. Um, I think I at least two of them, but the other two were already sold. So there's nothing I could do. You know what I'm saying? So. But um, Auto Tunes, like I said, it was a pop up project. Um, it was around my birthday. I, I had the songs ready. I initially was supposed to drop a project June 29th, and it was supposed to be called Vision Clear. But um, life took a turn, you know. And when life does that, you you just you gotta react to it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And uh, when that happened, I uh, I just was like, okay, hmm. Now what can I what can I do to this is challenging right now, but what? It gotta, it gotta, I gotta keep going. I can't stop. You know what I'm saying? So, I, um, I, uh, I, what I did was actually the songs on. I think it's two songs on Auto Tunes. I had dropped like four songs, just like dropped. And this is before I knew the knowledge of approach you know what i'm saying because approach is everything you know what i'm saying you can't just throw music out there whether it's good or bad mm -hmm. how are they gonna hear it you know what i'm saying so i um what i did was i took the songs i threw them on soundcloud and i got like 20 views 20 30 views and then what i did was i yanked them off because i was like well can't do that you know what I'm saying? i had talked to my friend uh spencer she uh she really helped me out a lot like she um she basically just gave me kind of like a blueprint of what to do like you need to do this instead of that because this will work this way and then I'm, and she showed me like i'll go over her house and she'll show me and i'll be like damn bro you right like you know and she was like one of the only people that she she came to me you know what i'm saying like blake you know i can help you out you know what i'm saying get you you know because she's marketing is what she does you know what i'm saying and i'm like damn bro like you you know you're right you know what i'm saying and I and I don't have any knowledge of marketing. I have no idea. I, I'm thinking if I put it out there, everybody will see it. It's good. Everybody will see it. No, not the case. So um, after that, uh, I mean, with uh, Spencer's help, that's when I I got my got my website. I started getting uh, professional cameramen instead of my brother. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, start performing and take you know practice performing before I go perform. Like really taking it serious because it's like. If you're not serious, why do you expect people to take you serious? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you gotta, you gotta be serious about it. So, mm -hmm. so where do you be performing at? Um, well, every Tuesday I'm at Mixed Brick Town with Bianca Bad. Um, I've been with her. I've been with Bianca for a minute. Okay. Um, but actually, that was probably when I got back home from Western. Um, I think that was the first showcase I did. And this was back when she was at the Bullfrog, like. I think it was even before the Bullfrog, she was somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And that was like my very first time like kind of performing in Detroit. And I just stuck with her because, you know, the love was genuine. And, you know, she she's dope. She's really dope. You know, and she's a great host too. Great mm -hmm. host. And um, so uh, with that, Bianca kind of like, she kind of like, she, she's watched me grow. Because like I, I remember when I first started at the showcases, I was nervous as shit. Like, mm -hmm. I'm talking about, I, 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 <laughs> like you can hear the nervousness in my voice. Like, and then like I just got comfortable I kept going kept doing it she would motivate me you know what I'm saying so that, that stuff like that really means a lot to me like when people are genuine and you can tell they genuine you just feel it it's just like mm -hmm. that I really appreciate that when did you like settle in like when did your confidence settle in as far as oh. you being able to perform like how many times did it actually take you well it wasn't even uh, it was yeah it wasn't even the amount of times it was the energy I received back like from people like seeing the look on people's faces as I'm performing like somebody like really intrigued like oh my god and then hearing an applause afterwards it just like it kind of just like, lifted me all the way up like 
oh, I can do this. And like, I, I played basketball my entire life. So I just take it like, okay, the stage is my court now. You know what I'm saying? So it's time for me to perform. But instead of five people, it's just me. Mm -hmm. So I got more I got more opportunities to take that shot. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I got me. Hey, you feel me? Right. So you know what I'm saying? Like, so it's just like I got it, it's it's it it the confidence really came from and I wanna say, I'm sorry, uh I used to watch interviews. I used to watch interviews of Michael Jackson, Lauren Hill, Biggie Smalls, and Tupac. Those are my top four people that I watch their interviews. Why? Because I like the way they think. You know what I'm saying? And um, Michael Jackson said, I don't know which interview this was. I think he was like 22 or something, real, real young. Um, he said, if you, the, what you need to do, if you want to do anything, if you want to become a great, a, a great artist, the, uh, the best thing to do is to practice your performing live. That's it. That's all he, that's what he said. And I took that and ran with it. Like, hmm, because a lot of people cannot perform live. Some of my some of the artists that's my top five can't perform live. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, they you know what I'm saying? They they making their money, but at the same time, who's the who's the top who's the top artist right now? Beyonce. Why? Because she gives you a show when you see her, mm -hmm. and it's not a, it's it's like a full show, and you hear everything she's saying, and she sounds like the record versus somebody with all this auto tune that when you hear them live, it's like ah, ah. like what the fuck is going on? Like what? <laughs> so you know yeah well yeah my confidence really just came from the feedback the energy I was getting back like the energy I got back it just oh man I'm a vibration vibrational person so yeah I love that energy, energy is everything to me like if, and if somebody got a bad vibe I feel it instantly and I feel weird I should be like I think I need to go <laughs> like, for real I'm one of those people so um I want to get a little bit into your um your thoughts on the LGBT community. Okay. Because um, do you identify within that community? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay. I am L all the way. You know? <laughs> um, and that's the thing. Um, one of my, like, dreams is to be, like, the female Drake. Like, everybody, like, really fuck with me and just be like, Blake, yeah, oh, my God. What? You don't like Blake? You tripping. Like, Blake is nothing but love. Like, you know what I mean? And I just, that's really one of my goals is really to get out here as... Uh, a LBGT artist that that's on the that's like you know that that holds us down like really represents like all those horrible stereotypes. Uh, I mean, Young Ma is cool, but at the same time, she's everything that everybody thinks about gay people, and that's just not that's not it. That's mm -hmm. not it for us. You know what I mean? Like, I don't change my voice. I don't speak deeply. I don't try to sound like a dude. You know what I mean? I got all brothers. You know what I'm saying? But I still don't do that. You know what I mean? Like, I believe in being comfortable with who I am. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So. Like, I just want to be that, I just want to be that role model for the younger people that, that are kind of like, not necessarily confused, but just lost in the, the trends and what's around them. Like, mm -hmm. just be yourself. It's okay. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I get, I mean, not to mention, I work in construction, so I work with nothing but guys. And, I'm, and, and you know, they, they, they always saying little jokes and shit, but at the end of the day, it comes with the territory. If you if you look nice, they gonna try you regardless. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? She just gotta deal with it. You know, yeah. it is what it is. You know, because at first I remember I used to like be offended, like, dude, I'm gay, obviously, like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? <laughs> but then I was just like, you know what? I'm beautiful, so let me just <laughs> let me accept that. So now instead, what what I do is. Instead of when they say, cause I know, so, cause I know men, they like to say things and think they trying to, they think they offending you on the low. But what I do, I trick their mind. When they be like, hey, beautiful, I'm like, hey, how you doing? Right. You all right? right back. Yeah, right. like, how you doing? You know what I'm saying? I'm comfortable. Right. You the one uncomfortable, think about it. I look like a dude. I'm dressed like a dude. You calling me beautiful. You got something you want to tell me? You right, know what right. I'm saying? Like, dude, you know, <laughs> for real. Like, what, what's up? You know what I'm saying? So, I just learned to deal with it. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And, um... And I want other girls to realize that too, because I know it'd it be like it'd be situations where women are messing around and dip and dab, end up pregnant, have a baby, and go back to their ways. It's just like you can't get caught up in that, sweetheart. You can have you and your wife can have a baby. You know what I'm saying? Because I know that's what I plan to do. <laughs> I don't know with who. I'm gonna find her. Oh, I'm single too. Oh, shit! <laughs> Had to let that throw that out there. <laughs> single as fuck. Somebody better snatch me up soon. <laughs> I had a goal to to uh, basically tour to all the prides and just like you know get out there and let them know who the female Drake is. Okay. <laughs> so the female Drake. So you you gonna be singing too? 
Oh, I, you know, I hit a note or two. And, and auto tune, and that's another thing with auto tunes, it's literally like everything I do is self explanatory. Auto tunes. I'm literally, I have, I have the auto tune effect on most of the songs. I, I don't think Dance With It has it on there, but City Full, Tattoo, Growth, a lot on my mind, they all have auto tune on them. And I just did that to, um, I was trying something out. Um, City Full was the first song that I did. And actually, City Four was recorded by my my late friend Sean Watts, and um, I wanted to keep that. He was the first person I did auto to win, and it sounded so he did it so right. It was just like, whoa, that sounds good. But I didn't want to get attached to auto to it because I didn't want I didn't want to be one of those artists. You know what I'm saying? I kind of have a vision to like kind of like dip into all aspects of like sounds and music. Like I kind of want to do like a project where it's nothing but like a Jill Scott feel, you know what I'm saying? Cause I got some, I can do that, you know what I'm saying? Then I want to do nothing but bars, you know? Cause I can rap too, you know what I mean? Like, but I, and like my confidence, I try not to be too overbearing with it. Cause some people don't know how to take it. But at the same time, you gotta, you gotta believe in yourself. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's everything. You know, you gotta focus yourself the hardest. If you mm -hmm. don't, you're in trouble. Right. You're in some big trouble. You know, you can't count on somebody else. How do you think that, um, you know, your sexual orientation might impact your music? Um, and your place in the rap community. Yeah, so I know, I, what I know is it'll take a little longer, but I appreciate Young Mind Days Love because they kind of like paved the way, they kind of like opened up that lane, you know, mm -hmm. although ain't nobody running it right now, um, it's open. So it's kind of like, I feel like it's time. For me. I feel like the world, I feel like the world is getting um, used to gay people, but now it's time for them to love us. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I'm gonna be the one to open their eyes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So what, what inspires your music and your style? Because I see, I mean, you got style. You got style. We're going to um, take some pictures at the end so everybody can see. Hey, okay, look, I'm simple with it, you know? <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm, um, I believe in one of my favorite quotes, um, the brilliant mind masters the art of simplicity. And I just keep it simple, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't try to do too much, you know? I might dress up, but I can't really afford that right now, you know? I, I'd rather put my money in the studio, on the camera, you know what I'm saying? So... You're gonna see me wear a lot of stuff 10 times, but at the same time, it's gonna be mixed in. You know what I mean? But my mom is a hairdresser and uh, she's been doing hair for 30 years. So, you know, I, that's kind of like in my blood with the whole style thing. She really started me off with it. Um, when I was like, what was that? 12, I think I had like pictures there or something. And she was just like, uh, I think you should wear this. This would be cute. You know, my mom was Virgo too, so you know. Mm -hmm. So we, we really click. Like, that's my best friend. Like, we really be clicking. And she was like, Yeah, you should wear this. And then, like, she know I'm gay. It, it hurt her feelings at first, of course. Whatever. She got over it and she, she realized this is who I am. You know, she accepts it. And now she actually, she'll try to, like, pick out, like, you know, boyish stuff, as she call it. But uh, whatever. <laughs> it's my style. Because, I mean, I still wear women's clothes. I wear, men, I wear men's clothes because I'm skinny. I can't really wear too many boys' clothes. You know what I'm saying? So. But um, at the same time, it's like, I don't know, my style, I just, people always compliment me, compliment me on my style, but I don't really be trying that hard. Mm -hmm. I just be literally, I just, I like to keep it simple, you know what I mean? I mean, like, you, mean you may just look good and everything, that may just be what it be. Yeah, you know, like, for real, you feel me? <laughs> <laughs> like, for real, like, you might just, I just, I just be simple. Like, I'll go somewhere, and I'll think I just threw something on. And then, like, damn, Blake, where you get that from? And I'll be like... What do you mean? <laughs> I got it from Marshall for seven dollars. Like, what do you mean? Right. Like, even when I shop at H and M, like this, I got it on sale for like seven dollars. Like, I didn't pay full price for this. Mm -hmm. Come on now, I got a bargain shop. My mama taught me how to do that too. And I go to the resale store a lot. I love that place. Me and my, me, my mom, and my grandma before she passed. That was our thing. We'll go every Sunday to the one on Nine Mile in Coolidge, or we'll go to the one on um. 11 mile in the Quinder, I think it is. But yeah, we would always go and just pick out little stuff. And we would pick out dope stuff and people would be like, Blake, where you get that from? Resale store. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, I got to save these dollars <laughs> for real. But yeah, that's where the style come from. Just me being me, mm -hmm. simple. So mm -hmm. where do you um, see your music going from here? Like, do you see yourself trying to get a record deal or stay independent? Mm -hmm. And um, just where do you want to see yourself in the next couple of years? Okay. So honestly and truthfully, um initially i wanted a deal i did until i learned what deals were about right and i was like no nah, i want to be independent i, I got to be independent i, I don't fuck that <laughs> you know what i'm saying like all the things that come with it like Dej Loaf and how she got played and like, she has she has really good music but because she's the she's in a deal you know what i'm saying like when you them deals oh no i learned about them 
no i'm good you know unless you're gonna unless you're gonna unless it's somebody it's somewhere like rca where they, they're giving you the free reign to do what you want or you giving me a, a deal where i can do what i want then we got something going on but other than that i don't mind taking a long road i don't mind you know what i'm saying i like the journey it's, i love the journey it's the best part like the best part is the journey and if i skip out on that i'm skipping out on experience that i can talk about you know what i'm saying because i have like my music is really it it's like my audience is women, but at the same time, it's artists. It's for the artists, too, because I'm talking about my pain and what I'm going through trying to get up top. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, yeah. Right. Independent. Well, West Side Wildlife. Wildlife Detroit <laughs> Records. Monday. <laughs> All right. So we want to um, thank you for coming out to the Real Visual Outlet. You know it. Just Blake. First, um, hey, this is my first interview ever. So this is history. We, this is history right now, like for real. <laughs> so before we end it, just let us know, um, cause I uh, talked to you before. You was talking about some merchandise that you was working on. Yeah. Let everybody know your new projects, even if we talked about it before in the yeah. interview. Just repeat it to let everybody know what you got going on, so they can look out for that. Okay. So I got Auto Tunes out right now on all digital platforms. Um, you can you can uh, add me on Instagram at Just Blake. I have a website called JustBlake.com. Everything's on JustBlake.com. Actually, yeah, just go to JustBlake.com. Um, everything's there um, from pictures, to videos. Uh, I got a new video out off my first project called City Full. Check that out. It's dope. Second video, Dance With It, is coming out maybe next week. I hope so. Got to talk to my cameraman. But, yes, I fuck with y'all. I love y'all. Thank you, Visual Outlet. This is love. That's love. I'm love. Always love. Uh. <laughs> All right. Angels thinking like demons. the ropes so like my time to not this village kid can teach you something i've been learning a lot you see it's not about what you got but what you realize you're not these prices thoughts got me thinking about the things that i cop you see i ain't worried about trump i ain't worried about cops i'm worried about the fact you left your mind in that box i'm worried about the fact that you thought that you could break and that that love could take it but that's all that made it yeah. city full of pain city full of gain city full of get it how you can City full of pain, city full of gain, city full of get it how you can. Was a love, was a love, cause I need it. Was a love, was a love, cause I see it. Was a love, was a love, cause they need it. Yeah, I see it, I see it. City full of angels, dressed like demons. They thinking like demons. Goddamn, was a love, was a love, cause they need it.